Welcome to week two of Sam Rosen Art. This week our lesson is about gratitude. To have gratitude means that you are grateful. The word grateful means showing appreciation or thankfulness for kindness. So this week we'll be making art that shows things that we are grateful or thankful for. I've included some examples that are both designs made with words, photos, paintings, and drawings. And you do also have a digital option. I was having some problems with my video and sound together, but I did make a short video clip telling some of the things that I was grateful for. Since the first thing that you're going to need to do is make a list of things that you are grateful for. So right now I'm in my home studio. I'm very thankful that I have my home studio. Um, and my dogs are laying under my table while I'm working. I'm thankful to have them. Um, thankful to be safe at home. And then I realized that that really sounded strange, so I went ahead and continued just typing out some of the other things that I was grateful for. So things like home, family, pets, love, and so on. So right now you can go ahead and take a minute and make your list of the things that you are grateful for. We will have a little bit of pre-work for this lesson, and that's going to depend on what art making options you select. So here are this week's options. Option one, you can create a word design that shows something that you are grateful for. So one of those words on your list and you're going to create a design and that design you can either have um, a range of values, light to dark in the shapes, or you can show warm colors and cool colors. Option two, you can create a drawing, painting, collage from magazines or any kind of papers you find around the house that show something you're grateful for. Or you can do a digitally edited photo or you could do a photo collage like we did last week. I actually took a photo of my physical collage and then changed it with Pixlr. So back to that pre-work that I mentioned. If you're doing option one, you're not going to have a whole lot of pre-work. But if you're doing options two or three, you may need to take some photos, make some sketches, find some pictures or words in magazines, and then just gather the materials that you need, which you'll have to do for option one also. Option one is our word design. So like I said, there's the warm, cool version, and there's also the value version. So for the warm pool version, you're going to start with your paper. If you can find one without lines, that would be really awesome. So you're going to write your word large with block or bubble letters. I kind of had to fix mine because it didn't go all the way down to the bottom. So right now I'm just kind of redrawing. I'm adding on. I'm not erasing the whole thing. I'm just extending my letters down so that they're all the same size. Next, you're going to trace some shapes on top of your word. So just kind of fill up the page with patterns. You can use just freeform shapes. You can trace something. You can do a ruler. Anything to make patterns. And I'm drawing these on top of my word. After that, I'm going to start with warm colors. I'm going to color in the shapes inside of my word with warm colors. And I'm spreading those colors around and making sure the colors don't touch. So after I do that, in the background and the shapes around my letters, I am coloring it in with the cool colors and I'm doing the exact same thing. I am coloring in one shape at a time, I'm doing one color at a time, and I'm making sure I'm spreading each of the colors around my design. For the value one, it's very, very similar. You're going to start the artwork out exactly the same way. You're going to start with your white paper, making your words in block or bubble letters, and making your design to fill the space. And then you're also going to do a value scale, because instead of different colors, you're just going to have lights and darks, and you want at least four different values. So again, coloring in each shape a different value. 
and I don't want my values to touch. I want the shape next to a dark shape to be light enough to be seen. I don't want put, to put two dark values right next to each other or it's going to be hard to tell where my different shapes are. And another tip would be to use the side of your pencil. Unless you're doing a very small shape, you're not going to be able to get your values and get your shapes filled in with just the tip of your pencil. Alright, option two. There's lots of different things on this. You can really do any kind of drawing or painting that you want. I did a drawing with crayon and then I, right now I'm just showing a watercolor resist. But I'm actually using coffee because I know not everybody has paint. But you can see I get this light brown color with my coffee and it will also resist the crayon like watercolor paint does. And I'm using a Q-tip. We also, I had a bunch of junk mail folders laying around or envelopes. So I am adding some transparency. So I'm adding some different layers right now. I am, I started with some sketches. I didn't like the way those turned out. So I did a picture. And I actually took these pictures. You cannot look up pictures on the internet. It needs to be something that you took a picture of. But you can trace your own pictures. So I'm using Sharpie to trace my dogs, and then on the other side I'm using the colored Sharpies to fill it in. After I have all of that done, then I can put a drawing underneath it, or I could make a collage behind it. So that's actually what my edited one is, the collage. So I got different pictures, I got different papers together, and then I made a little collage and put my dog on top of it. And then from there what I did is I actually didn't glue it down because I didn't like it that much but I wanted I liked it enough to take a picture of it and then turn it into something else so I went to my Pixlr app I took my photo down in the first menu you can crop you can pixelate there's lots of different tools that you can use in Pixlr, really the best way to learn Pixlr is just to experiment. So going down at the bottom and really just seeing what all of the different options are. Again, anytime that you like something, there's a little check at the bottom right that you can click if you like it. And there's an X at the bottom right to click if you do not like it. Also notice there's a sliding scale at the bottom. You see me moving. Okay, that adjusts how much the effect is. Okay, it adjusts whether it's full effect or just partial effect. Okay, when you're done at the top left, there is a done button, and then you save the image and upload to Artsonia. So, thank you so much for joining me. I hope everybody enjoys this project, and I can't wait to see your art on Artsonia.